Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and through you to the membership. Another study. I think this is, uh, I think this is the third of the, of the evening. It's something we should probably get used to during this budget process. You know, the, the underlying amendment would reverse an executive order by the governor that gave in-state tuition rates to those who break the rules. This body never granted such a policy. This body never authorized giving in-state tuition rates subsidized by the taxpayers to those who break the rules. An executive order. I guess that's the new way of doing business here on Beacon Hill and in the United States. We don't go through the legislative process anymore. We issue executive orders. You know what's ironic about all this? Currently today, if you serve in the military, you come home from Iraq, perhaps you lived in Nashua, New Hampshire, now you want to move to Massachusetts, and you're in Massachusetts for two, three, four months, you can't get in-state tuition rates because you have to wait the appropriate residency requirement so that you can get such a tuition rate. Yet those who break the rules can get subsidized in-state tuition rates. And, you know, there's often times people ask questions about cost. So there's not a cost to do so. Really. I ask this question. If your undocumented status in this country, and you can't legally hold employment, so when you apply to a state institution of higher ed, your income is going to show zero. I think that makes you qualify for additional financial aid. In-state tuition rates are already subsidized by those who pay non-in-state tuition rates. Taxpayers are directly subsidizing these in-state tuition rates. Now, the further amendment was argued that it's needed because the underlying amendment restricts access to education. I, uh, I reread my amendment. I didn't see anywhere where we are preventing anyone from going to school. So there must be a, a miscommunication there. But I want to clarify, that's not what the amendment does. I'm curious as to why the further amendment has anything to do with HHS involved when we're talking about you know, higher education. You know, it's, it's really worth noting that the FAIR report indicates that annually in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, 1.8 billion, I'll say that again, 1.8 billion dollars annually are spent on those who are breaking the rules. And here we are extending that without a vote of this body, by executive order. We're going to continue to subsidize those who break the rules. Those who break the rules should not be subsidized by those who play by the rules. Now, there seems to be a lot of studies on this issue. We can't, can't get a vote on it. I'm curious as to where the other studies are, what the results of those show. And with this, with this further amendment, I would ask the, the gentleman from Boston if he could give me uh, a sense of the timeline as to when this report's due. I didn't see that in the further amendment. So maybe the gentleman can answer that for us. I'd really would appreciate that. Uh, I ask when a, when a vote be taken on this issue, it is taken by call of the yeas and nays. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.